first, thank you for inviting me again to participate to this summit, which year after year I can see is uh, really uh, more and more uh, attractive and interesting. Uh, I think you have more than 1,000 delegates from, uh, I don't know, 76 countries uh, this year. And uh, the theme that you have selected, I think, is very topical because uh, we all know that uh, uh, transport infrastructures is, as was said yesterday, uh, sort of the vein of uh, allowing the flow of economy because it allows the mobility of goods and people. But for this, uh, and to accompany the expected growth, slow growth, global uh, growth over the 20 next years, we need to invest now in uh, a, a adjusted infrastructures and modes of transport. So uh, the theme, I think, is at the right time, in the right moment. Uh, of course, uh, with uh, various uh, perceptions, depending on the impact of the financial crisis, depending on the uh, scarcity of money, which is and the dwindling funds that actually governments or financial institutions uh, or private sector can have. So this is why uh, this type of, uh, of conventions like yours uh, give the necessary vision, long-term vision, to boost actually the energy and to go beyond the uh, immediate short-term difficulties. Well, um, rail uh, investments are usually very high especially when we're talking of high speed, like in the ministerial table, uh, round table yesterday. But again, let me take a, a little bit of, a, of an overall uh, view, okay? And I will use your own OECD statistics figures, if I may, that actually are quite encouraging, because uh, you forecast that in the next 20, 25 years, uh, transport, all modes, okay, uh, will be uh, receiving $11 trillion. In, this is a very important figure, uh, uh, justifying what I just said before about uh, you know the infrastructure of transport accompanying the uh, the, the, the economy uh, expected growth. But what is most interesting and unprecedented is that 40% of this 11 trillion dollars will be invested in rail developments, and this is actually unprecedented because many governments know uh, that in their transportation budget the share of rail was a couple of percents. So this overall, of course, uh, uh, percentage of 40% is uh, giving me the confirmation that governments, financial institutions, uh, companies, markets, private sector have understood that rail is really in this complementarity of modes, the mode that is the most sustainable and that can really accompany along long corridors with new high-speed projects and links uh, the expected mobility in the years to come. Well, I, I cannot mention them all because uh, those I don't mention could be jealous, but uh, those that come in my mind and I think which is the vision that we must have in this 21st century is all the efforts that are being developed at the moment with tangible examples already of corridors linking east and west. And this is very important, either through the Trans-Siberian routes or what is being developed at the moment, and I think this will be an achievement very soon uh, with the celebration in October, is the link under the Bosphorus. This is a small link, rail link, for the first time the rail link between two continents uh, divided by, 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 by water. Uh, but this link in itself will, of course, facilitate the life of populations on both sides of the Bosphorus, fine, but also will allow, through the uh, uh, ancient spice and silk routes, uh, the flow of containers from Asia to Europe from London to Shanghai. And this in itself, I think, is an excellent uh, concrete uh, uh, achievement of, of, of a rail project. Otherwise, of course, you have a number of uh, 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 high-speed projects, which are, we know, very, very expensive, but also uh, very expected in the number of places around the world with uh, uh, big poles of population and, and, uh, and uh, distances, uh, range of distances uh, uh, for uh, perfect for high speeds. 
uh, and uh, we know that uh, the Moroccan project is uh, very soon uh, uh, finalized. The Turkish project again from Ankara to Istanbul will be, uh, uh, will be done this year. We know that the Saudi project is uh, being uh, done. We, uh, we are discussing of the Russian project, the uh, development of the Korean, the Japanese, the European project, the Californian project, uh, the Brazilian project. I'm sorry for those I forget. But this in itself shows the dynamism of, uh, of rail technology okay uh, for uh, I think the best of, uh, of, of uh, not only uh, economical but also social social societal sorry uh, societal uh, achievements and this I think is for me uh, uh, very uh, good to see that rail can contribute to these uh, 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 improvements of society and economy This, uh, well, I think this is part one of your uh, conferences, which you were leading, I think, no, last year. Uh, no, uh, I'm not going to give figures and make, you know, uh, comparisons because they would have to be really examined with a lot of relativity. Uh, but what we see in the trend of this 21st century, maybe because money is too scarce to continue uh, to uh, uh, create, develop modes in competition with each other on the same corridors, is a look for the the complementarity of modes and this optimization of resources of financial resources land resources and bring actually in good complementarity the best of all modes for the benefits of the users or markets and in this respect one uh, issue which is fundamental is the think the development of the thinking and the development of the hubs whether it is the stations in the city in the airports, whether it is the logistical hubs, dry ports, uh, for instance, or, uh, or maritime ports, to link uh, all modes uh, to uh, allow for these north-south, east-west corridors, uh, maritime, rail and road together. And this, I think, uh, uh, maybe could be a theme for next year.